Hello, this is Lani Mikayo, and here is the Carrington Road Report for 2015. In this issue, we are talking about mental health. Mental Health Awareness Week is an annual campaign that has been running since 1993 and is observed in over 150 countries. The campaign is centered around World Mental Health Day on October 10th, and this year it ran from the 5th to the 11th of October. Mental illness affects many New Zealanders. Statistics released from the 2012 to 2013 New Zealand Health Survey showed one in six New Zealand adults had been diagnosed with a common mental health disorder at some time in their lives. Throughout the show, we will hear from Jimmy Hunt, co-founder of Live More Awesome. We talk to Eddie Freeman, a blogger and attendee of the WANA Festival. Fili Mu Falefatu from West Fono Clinic gives us a Pacific cultural perspective on mental health. And from Unity, Deborah Rowland shares her experience as a lecturer and the importance of maintaining an awareness of student well-being within the classroom. Live More Awesome is a charity organization that developed out of an adventure called Lilo the Waikato, in which Jimmy Hunt swam a $7 Lilo 425 km down the Waikato River. The exercise aimed to encourage conversation about mental health. Stephanie Locke spoke of Jimmy Hunt to learn more about the philosophy of the organization and what events they have coming up. Live More Awesome is working to change the way mental health is talked about. The charity aims to promote open and honest conversation by engaging and inspiring people. We spoke to Jimmy to find out more about what they do and what they have coming up in the future. In a nutshell, what we do is we raise awareness for mental health, we reduce the stigma associated with mental health, and we inspire people to ask for help. We've got some good things coming up. We're, we're, we've got the world's biggest water slide again in February out by Bethel's Beach. Um, bigger and better than before, um, so we look forward to that. Tickets go on sale very shortly. Uh, we're also kicking off this LMA Day, which will be monthly events around the world uh, to help people look after their mental health. And uh, we're starting a thing called LMA Adventures, which is having uh, people around the world going on adventures uh, in order to spread the word of mental health, inspire other people, and uh, look after themselves. If you would like to join the conversation, Live More Awesome can be found on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and their website. WANA stands for We Are Not Alone and is a festival run by people who themselves experience depression and anxiety. The festival aims to raise awareness and promote acceptance and understanding. The free event was held on October 10th and was a huge success. Jessica Googler spoke with Eddie Freeman who attended WANA. They discussed the festival and his perceptions of depression and anxiety. Eddie also runs a blog where he discusses various topics related to mental health and more. During the Mental Health Week in Auckland, many events were held in order to raise awareness of mental health issues. One of those events was the Wana Festival held in Takapuna. We interviewed one of the visitors, Eddie Freeman, on his view on what could or needs to be done in order to change the perception of mental disorders. Here's his view. Stigmatize like what? You know, what is to destigmatize something? Is it to just make it socially acceptable? Is the, is the goal to just make feeling like that come under the umbrella of social acceptance? You know, what I think really needs to happen is we need to stigmatize the social consciousness, which is the way that, you know, we raise our children and, you know, what we value as a society and the expectations that we're impregnating into people from early on and having them cycle through life trying to meet you know expectations that are impossible impossible to meet and quite you know empty in their substance mr freeman leaves us with an interesting thought that we should try to set expectations which are not impossible to meet and share those values amongst each other therefore the rate of people feeling less valued wouldn't be so high and mental disorders wouldn't be stigmatized now we hear from Philemu mufalefatu whom I had the pleasure of interviewing on his thoughts from a cultural perspective on what mental illness is in the Pacific community and the progress at West Fono Health Clinic. 
Viele Mu mentioned the difficulty in trying to express the importance on this issue to Pacific people, as it is not a popular or much discussed issue in their culture. He also expressed that New Zealand born Pacific Islanders are more likely to be affected with mental illness compared to those born in the islands, illustrating the different lifestyles and their effect on people as they try to deal with pressure of everyday living and social well being in a different country. Philip Moore finds a great deal of joy helping his people in this field, but disappointed that many Pacific communities are still showing ignorance to health problems associated with mental illness. Philip Moore Falefatu is a social worker who has devoted 15 years working for the West Fono Health Clinic in West Auckland in mental health. Mental illness, he says, is misunderstood in the Pacific community. Here is Philip Moore Falefatu and his view on this topic. I would say one in four. Wow. Yeah, Pacific Island. Yeah. The few, the island that born here are the ones that easily get affected by the mental health. Uh, a very big, big job to do of uh, you know giving out the, those uh, information and educate our people regarding their knowledge of and understanding of mental mental illness. I see the reward and the result of what we're doing. Yeah, even though it's not that much, but change a life. You know, we do. Another level of recovery is a, is a huge success. Filemu will continue to work for his community and has high expectations for the future with Pacific people coming to understand and seek the help they need on such health issues. And now, an educational perspective. Kami Sereti spoke with Deborah Rowland, Senior Lecturer in the Communications Department at Unitec, about the importance of mental health awareness in tertiary institutions. As a lecturer, she sees that students have their student life and home life as well, and she needs to be mindful when she is lecturing and to state if there is sensitive information that is going to be delivered during her lectures. Unitec lecturer Deborah Rowland discusses her responsibilities within her professional practice as a lecturer and how she works alongside the student wellbeing services to ensure that students are receiving the support and assistance they need during their time at Unitec. If I can see a student in the class, their body language is looking uncomfortable, they're not concentrating or something, I will look for perhaps one of their friends who I might be able to say, is all okay, or else I'll talk to the student. Mm -hmm. Student wellbeing are really excellent people. And they will listen and in their professional judgment they'll decide whether to let the lecturer, i.e. me, know that the student is having some issues. Unitec's student support services are available free to students, offering a variety of support networks, including the student wellbeing services. More information on what support is available and contact information can be found on the Unitec website. There are many support systems in place for people to reach out to and national helplines can be found on the Mental Health Foundation of New Zealand website. And that wraps up the Carrington Road Report on Mental Health Awareness for 2015.